Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the quarantine kitchen as we are in what seems like a never ending quarantine situation. So, because of that, we are making something that is not very hard to make, but it's damn delicious to eat. It might not be the healthiest thing in the world to eat, but whatever. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to make some homemade chicken and waffles. First thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna take about a pound and a half to two pounds of chicken. We're gonna lay that out on some parchment paper or, or a cutting board, whatever you want. Uh, if you're like me, you're gonna have a wonderful chicken assistant that lays that out before you because if these hands aren't touching raw ground meat, they're sure as hell not touching raw chicken. We get that laid out and we're gonna cover that up. We're gonna use a fancy mallet. We're gonna beat the heck out of it, take out all of our frustrations. We're gonna thin that chicken down just so it cooks a little faster. After we get that thinned down, we're going to add it to a brine. So we're going to take three cups of buttermilk and two tablespoons of hot sauce. We're going to soak that all together with our chicken there. If you're like me and don't pre-plan for anything in your life, you're going to realize, sweet, I don't have buttermilk. That's pretty easy. I put that on there for you. You can substitute buttermilk for just regular milk for however many cups you need with equal tablespoons of lemon juice. So let's get started. Go ahead and cover that up and just some of you guys might have a fancy meat mallet we don't have that here rolling pins gonna work just fine once you have the chicken all thinned down just go ahead and get it in the bag we'll mix up our own buttermilk since we didn't buy any beforehand we'll put that in there with our hot sauce we're gonna refrigerate that for a little bit just kind of let everything soak into the chicken so once your chicken's brined, in most cases you're going to brine it for between 4 to 8, some people do it up to 24 hours. Just however long you brine it, all that's doing is it's just letting that the buttermilk and the seasonings, the flavors you get in there, get into the meat. Um, if you didn't do any type of brine when you, you know, battered your chicken and put it in the flour, you will just have all the flavor on the outside in the coating of the meat. So the brining is really what helps work that flavor through the entire piece of meat. So once you're done brining it, go ahead and bring it out and have your dredging ready to go. Your dredging is going to be a cup and a half of flour, some paprika, some salt and pepper, and then you'll be dipping the chicken in buttermilk into the flour mixture back into the buttermilk and then back into the flour mixture again to make sure it's nice and coated. One thing that we're going to do real quick that doesn't really involve the chicken or the brine or anything that we have going on is we're going to put some bacon in the oven. Uh, with everything that you have going on here with we brought out the waffle maker, new addition. The hot oil to fry the chicken is just going to be way too much going on. So 400 degrees in your oven, about 15 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes is going to give you a good starting point and then you can kind of check it and go minute by minute there until you reach your level of crispiness. I use the nice uh, roasting pan here that has the slats so all the grease drops down through. It's pretty easy cleanup and it's also a, a nice easy way to make bacon while you're doing other things. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we have our chicken that we brine for however long. It's still a little bit wet, but you're going to go ahead and you're going to dunk that in your buttermilk. You're going to coat that on both sides here with the flour and then just to make sure we have it all we're dunking back in going back into that flour just kind of shake off any excess you have and then right into the hot oil do about two to three pieces at a time just really depending upon how much space you have in the cast iron pan that you're making it in you could if you wanted to make this in an air fryer I just feel something like this with a with a chicken that you're cooking the whole way through it is a lot easier and a lot faster to cook this with an oil so we have our chicken in the cast iron skillet doing its thing you want to have that oil about 350 375 somewhere in that neighborhood there's two ways you can cook it you can leave it in here cook it completely the whole entire way through just checking it and temping it as you go you still want to reach that that proper internal temperature of 165 on the chicken. You can also cook it on one side real quick, cook it real quick on the other side just so it gets that crispiness and then put it in the oven to cook it all the way through. I just prefer it's already in the oil. Let's just let it keep going. So while we have it in there before we have to flip it, we gotta start rolling on the waffles. So open up your waffle maker. Uh, hopefully if you're like me, you have a nice and safe waffle maker 
that was manufactured sometime between 1975 and 1984. Just, you know, they were safer back then. Not really, it's a joke. My waffle maker is old as crap. Spray that there. If you don't spray it, it will stick like crazy. When you're filling up your waffle iron, just make sure that you don't overfill it. You want to give it a nice coat on the bottom. If you fill this puppy up completely and way overfill it and don't spread it around, it's just going to ooze out the sides and make a giant mess. So just a nice thin coating. I'm a little OCD about it. I like to make sure I have the whole bottom covered so I have nice perfect square waffles. And again with this, the hotter your iron is, um, the faster they're going to cook. Obviously if it's too hot, they're just going to burn on the outside and not cook on the inside. My waffle iron has this orange light here that I don't think tells me any bit of information. You may have a nicer waffle iron that was made sometime after the mid 80s and it might tell you a little bit more information. I just kind of get a feel for it. Just go ahead and just make sure you're, you're checking on that chicken. We want to get that flipped over and just make sure that it doesn't sit in there too long. You want to make sure. There you go guys, taking those waffles off, nice and golden brown, nice full squares. Like I said, you just kind of get a feel for it. It was probably only about two minutes in there. Just plate those up, put a little bit of butter in between them as you're going just so they don't stick together. I spray my waffle iron every other time. Just checking in here, our chicken's been in there about five minutes. Everything's still simmering nice. We're starting to get the... Uh, Starting to get some crispiness on the outside of the chicken, so don't want to cook it too long. Don't want to let it sit in the oil too long and absorb everything. But we're definitely cooking it all the way through here, so we're going to temp it here in a sec, see where we're at. So let's go ahead and get this chicken out of here. We'll put it in a dish, and we're just going to put it in the oven to keep it warm. Our bacon is going to be done shortly, and we'll just see how everything keeps going together. Get ready for round two on the chicken. First four done. We've got four more to go in. I noticed that they took a little bit longer than I'd like to cook. So I went and found a grilling thermometer. Uh, my oil is only about 325, so don't know why. It's on high. So it's just going to affect your cooking times. As long as the internal temperature of your meat is 165, it is healthy to eat. So we're going to dredge up these next four, get them going, keep making waffles, see what we come up with. Our second set of uh, chicken is in there. I think these ones went much better. I abandoned the double dip. I should have known not to follow the recipe I found and did the double dip because I think that's where we lost a lot of our flour. doesn't mean the first four that we did are bad. It just means we know what part of the plate we put those on and those are the ones we feed the kids. Yeah. We've had these in here a couple minutes now. We flipped them once. They're looking, quite honestly, a lot better than our first batch did. I definitely think I messed up doing the double dip. Uh, the breading's just not staying on there as strong as I would like. So, handy dandy grill thermometer. Can't emphasize it enough. Chicken 165, gotta do it. You know, ground meat, you can go a little bit under 140 if you want, but chicken's just gotta be there. And there you are, we're already cooking at 170, so. So now these are all good, just go ahead and turn your heat off. We're gonna put these in our glass pan. We, uh, we got these done faster than even the bacon is done. The bacon is back in there for five more minutes right now. So we were able to cook all that chicken in less than 20 minutes. Um, probably closer to 15 to be honest with you. So just a lot, a lot crispier than the first batch. I'll hold up the dish here in a sec once I get it all out. So here we have our delicious chicken. You can see the ones that I'm happier about, they're here in the back. They just, they just look a lot better. Those are the ones that we went ahead and just did the single dip on. They, cooked a, they just cooked a lot nicer in my opinion. You do you. You do whatever you want. It's your chicken. You want to use an air fryer. You want to fry them longer. You just want to flash fry them on either side and bake them. It's your world squirrel. You do whatever you want. We're going to put these in the oven just so they stay warm. Check on our bacon here. I don't know about you guys, but I like my bacon super crispy. Look at that. We're just about there. You don't want it to get super, super crispy on the pan because when you take it out, it's still going to have a little bit of cooking that it's going to do. And then it's just going to fry to pieces at that point. So go ahead and pull that out. And here we have our plate of waffles. 
The waffles were the thing that I cheated on the most here. I took the time, made my own chicken. Um, if you want to be super ghetto, go ahead, get yourself some Eggos and some Tyson chicken tenders. I won't tell anybody, but we did use just a standard add water, butter, and egg mixture to whip these up, so they're excited. <laughs> now that we have everything out, let's go ahead and, and get something on a plate and show you guys what our delicious chicken and waffle meal is going to look like. All right, so we have everything plated, getting ready to sit down to eat here. But give you guys one last close up there. Delicious waffles, delicious chicken, oven cooked bacon. So it's only fair to try it. And it's really the only way to eat it is with real maple syrup. You can use good old Mrs. Butterworth if you want, like the kids are using. Talk to your good friend Aunt Jemima. Maybe she wants to come for dinner. Either way, use yourself some syrup. I just like the real maple syrup. Put it all over everything. Waffles, chicken, bacon. It's gonna be delicious. Let's see what we got here. Cheers. I mean, I know I say it's good every time because I made it, but for those of you who don't know me, if it sucked, I would tell you. But it is very good. I'm definitely glad I made the uh, call there on the chicken. Nice and crispy. You can taste the flavor all the way through. Really, the only thing to wash this delectable brunch dinner down with is a nice tea. Is it a twisted tea? Does it have vodka in it? <laughs> only I know. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Or do if you want. I don't care. See ya.